Hey garden friends, welcome to another episode of AJ's Green Thumb. So in this episode, I wanted to continue the fall gardening and the fall planting process. So today's feature perennial, okay? It's a woody perennial. It's called Edgeworthia chrysanthia or paper bush. So paper bush, the paper bush plant Okay, it's hardy within zone 7A to 10A. Um, a few specs. At maturity, it reaches six feet high to eight feet wide. The flowers are very fragrant, because you know I'm about flowers. The flowers are very unique. They're clustered form, and they actually bloom in the middle of winter. They bloom between the months of January all the way into early April. All right. Some of the light needs. It needs filtered sun all day long. Since it's a woodland plant, they're generally located towards the edge of the woods. So they need sun, but they need more so like morning sun or filtered sun throughout the day if you're in a higher zone, such as I don't know, eight, nine, 10. The soil needs to be well drained and it needs to be kept at a relatively moist level. So don't allow the soil to dry out and don't have these plants in the middle of unfiltered sun. So let's bring you guys in just a little closer here. So the bark is very distinguished. Now it loses all of its leaves in the middle of winter, but like I said, it flowers in the dead of winter. These right here are the flower buds. So this plant is budded up. Now I've actually had this plant for an entire season. I purchased it last summer and I was gonna plant it last fall and I didn't get around to it. And what I ended up doing was overwintering it in my shed. So here it starts to bud up. These flowers get really large. So these are still some relatively healthy plants. Despite me not putting them in the ground last year when I had the opportunity. So I'm gonna do these plants some justice and put them in a bed. So let me orient you guys exactly where I'm at, where I'm standing, and where this future garden bed's gonna be. So on the other side of the camera, I've got this half circle garden, which has various hydrangeas. It's got lace caps, it's got Nico Blue, which is a mop head formed hydrangea. Um, it's got several lace cap hydrangeas as well which all have a blue tinge or blue hue to them. And it's also got this boxwood hedge on the outside, framing the garden bed. To the left of me, I have an extension of the woodland garden. It's got various perennials. It's got um, a Camellia Sasanqua hedge. All right. These are all Shishi Gashira Camellias. Shishigashira camellias. And they're also putting on buds. It's got various hydrangeas. There's a lot of oak leaf hydrangeas. I think they're called jet stream. There's also three little limes. There's a viburnum, a fire chief viburnum right here. This Fire Chief Viburnum really impressed me this year. It's really getting acclimated and established in this spot. At first, the first season I had it in here, it was wilting, it was dropping its leaves, it was looking really sad, but it's put on some substantial growth this past season. And off to my right, I've got the compost bin and this other woodland bed which has a host of 
woodland perennials, such as yellow twig dogwood, bloodgood Japanese maple, um, a Cherokee chief dogwood, which turns into an actual tree form. The yellow twigs are more like large shrubs. And did I mention a compost bin? So this proposed bed, I didn't get the exact measurements, but I would like it to be roughly 12 to 13 feet wide. So right now I've got my half moon edger. I'm going to go ahead and start tracing out this border, which is going to be roughly 12 to 13 feet wide and deep. And so what I intend to do is to mirror the half circle garden, which is behind the camera, which has all the hydrangeas. That's a good design principle to kind of mirror bed shapes, because what it does is it, it kind of unifies the garden. So I want to save about a good six to eight feet behind this magnolia, if you guys can see me. Um, as a walkway because one thing about garden design you always need to provide some form of access in and amongst the beds so this walkway right here I'll leave to be roughly let's see, one two three four five at least five feet and start my garden bed right here. So that's about 13 feet up to the tree. It's about 13 feet. The best thing to do is actually put the plant down in an approximation as to where you want it to, uh, to be. So we'll be here. These are roughly, what, six feet apart? One, two, three, four, five, six just a little over six feet apart. So if they get to be eight feet wide at maturity, they will eventually touch, which is fine because over here, I still need space for a walkway. So from the center, one, two, three, four, okay. And then the other four feet will make eight feet. So I'll have plenty of room for a walkway behind me. One, two, three, four, about four and a half feet walkway. That's plenty walkway. So that's a good location. And the azalea I'll put right here. So I hate to admit that I have this azalea. I did a video, which I'm sad to admit, it's been a couple of years old, it's probably two years, but nonetheless, I did a video a year or two ago where I showed my azalea haul. And this one, is the only one that I didn't plant. So I can't even find a good face. I mean, there's leaves and, and growth on every branch, even though over here looks a little bare, but that's fine. I'll plant that here. These will all three merge into one mound at some point. And I'll still have this area in the front where the camera is standing, which is roughly, I don't know, it's probably 15 feet, 15 by 30 feet. 
of lawn space, so we're good. Fall is a great time to refine your beds. So this is a well-defined walkway, right? These two garden beds are edged sharply. You see the delineation. So it's the next day. Here's kind of the halfway result. I really don't like presenting halfway projects on my channel, but this is real life and we don't always complete everything in one episode. So, so back here, this walkway, as you can see, I was fussing with this end of the bed as with this. I like it to, I want it to look, you know what guys? All right, a moment of sanity. Let's stop obsessing over the bed shape and let's just roll with it. So yeah, right over here, I'm gonna straighten that out a bit. You know, to be honest with you guys, gardeners do have a little bit of OCD Shout out to Nikki, <laughs> because we all want things to be a certain way. That's what that's about. We have a vision. We like to materialize our vision and we will tweak and tweak at something until we actually get it. guys if you're still hanging with me within this bed I intend on putting a lot of herbaceous perennials um, very few annuals but more so the uh, soft tissued perennials um, for that color for that extra color that'll pull us through 
uh, the entire growing season. A few things I wanted to cover in this video besides highlighting these Edgeworthia chrysanthus, Gold Rush Edgeworthia chrysanthus. So a lot of times in my bed prep, if you've watched my videos for quite some time, I like beds with curves. I like uh, beds with oval shapes, half moon shapes, um, S shapes, and so on and so forth. So this bed is no different. I want it to kind of mimic the bed that has all of the um, lace caps and the Nico blues and the hydrangea bed, the half circle hydrangea garden. I want it to mimic that, but in realizing where I'm placing this bed, I clearly see that that was not going to happen because I didn't have the same amount of space, number one. And I had to take into consideration the adjoining beds, all right? So these are the factors that I take into account when I'm making beds. Now, when I'm populating my beds, I usually, I like to start with structure, all right? I like to start with either a large shrub or in this case, a large, this is a large shrub actually. This is a uh, Jane Magnolia, all right? I'll throw a pitch up on the screen as to the type of flowers that it produces in the spring and they are just gorgeous. But I like to start with a large shrub or a tree or a structure such as an arbor or a pergola, um, something solid and more or less permanent. I like to start with that. Then I design my beds around that feature. And then I like to add my shrubs. In this case, I added these two Edgewardias. I have an Azalea, it's Michelle, by the way. It's called Michelle Azalea. Um, and it is a semi-evergreen Azalea in zone 7A. Then I'll actually just prep the whole bed. So what I intend on doing is laying out my cardboard, maybe some more compost, um, then the wood chips or the mulch on top and let this sit until next spring. So then next spring I'll come in and then I'll start adding all of my herbaceous perennials. I do want to put some foxglove back here. I do want to put some iris back here. Um, this gets a decent amount of sun throughout the day, even though it is filtered, um, but it's sufficient. Uh, I may also want to put some lamb's ear within here, maybe some boxwoods, maybe some boxwoods closer to the tree itself. All right, guys, I'll leave that to the future. I'll leave that for next season to worry about. Um, as of right now, this is good enough and I'm gonna sign off right here. Thanks for hanging with me on this episode and I'll see you on the next one. AJ's Green Thumb.